Hi, this is Rachel, and this is topic 35 of our supervision curriculum. This is our final, final topic. This is our final topic, and I call it application to scenarios. Now, basically, what this topic is, is an opportunity to apply everything that we have been working on and learning for the past two years. I do group supervisions across two years. We have cohort uh, join us for two full years. Um, most of them are finished or close to finished with their hours by the end of that time. Some of them may need more hours, but our group supervision meetings end for that cohort um, after two years. At that point, they can loop into another cohort if they still need group supervision, um, or we just switch to exclusively individual supervision while they finish up their hours. Now, you could do anything honestly with this topic, but there are a couple of things that I like to do. The first one is I like to use the Behavior Detectives book. And in that book, it gives, um, a scenario and then you skip to the end and you can see how that scenario was resolved. It's not ethical scenarios. It's more like, why wasn't this working? It's written from the perspective of some consultants in the field, Bobby Newman being um, the first author on this um, and their experience going in and doing consulting work and coming in and here's the presenting problem. And then they talk about here's how we resolved it, or here's how things played out in that situation. Um, there are some other things that do come up with that book. I love that book, but I also love that some of the things that were done are not best practice anymore. And that gives us a chance to talk about what evidence base exists now. So for example, there's not a lot of conversation in some of the scenarios about doing a functional behavior assessment and writing a behavior intervention plan that meets the needs of the learner and teaches them how to advocate for themselves and barely uses any extinction, right? That's best practice, but at the time, they didn't have the research to suggest that. Um, so, we read the scenario in the first half, and then we have a discussion. What things come to mind? What are things you would look at? If you were the consultant put into this, this situation, what would you be addressing? And it's really great to just see all of the ways that people would address things. Like, what would you focus on? What are some concerns? What would be questions that you would ask? And we kind of talk through and we say, yeah, so as a team, here's how we would move forwards knowing what we know now. We then flip, flip to the end to see what it discusses, right? What the consultant at the time did with the knowledge that they had. A lot of times they might use a DRO and DRO is not function-based. So we know that instead of a DRO, better practice, best practice would be to determine the function if you want to decrease a behavior, and then you can address it directly, right? So it gives us the opportunity to have those conversations, and the scenarios, the first half, are great. So even if you don't look at the end to see what that consultant did in that particular time, that's fine. You can still use the scenarios to have really great conversations and to have your trainees practice pulling together all of this information and everything that they know. Similarly, the other thing I like to do with these application to scenarios topic is ethical case scenarios. So I mentioned this one before when we talked about ethics, but a workbook of ethical case scenarios in applied behavior analysis. There's now a second edition or uh, yeah, a second edition um, with some updated uh, scenarios and how it maps on to the new ethics code. Again, um, just having the scenarios is fantastic. The workbook does not give solutions. Um, it does just provide scenarios because you may come up with a lot of different ideas. And that's the whole point. It gives you the scenarios as a jumping off point 
for the discussion. So ethical case scenarios, behavior detectives scenarios, these are great for this. And it gives you a chance to really assess how well your trainees are connecting all the dots, how they're putting together all the things, and what things you might need to go back and spend a little bit more time on. Um, if you, uh, and when I do topic 35, it's usually not just like one session. It's usually several. We usually um, spend three or four, maybe even five. It kind of depends upon the pacing um, on this topic. I also open it up for trainees to ask about, are there any other topics that we didn't just that we didn't discuss that you would like more information on. Um, what else would you like to learn? What else can we talk about? And it leaves it open then for trainees to come in and say, you know, actually I'm really confused with things like determinism and empiricism. And I don't know the difference between those and how, you know, or how, I don't know how those affect our science. So like, great, okay. We'll do scenarios today and next time I will come back with information about that topic. So it gives me a little bit of time to prepare. Um, or somebody might come in with their own ethical scenario that they'd like some feedback on or their own um, you know, case situation that they want some feedback on from the group and we use that. So this is really flexible. Basically, it's it's sort of the opportunity to, to pull everything together, to practice pulling things together and planning how everything would connect, but also an opportunity to branch out into any areas that haven't been covered yet. There is no written assignment for this, but you could create product measures based upon whatever topics you are discussing whatever topics you are discussing, right? I could give ethical scenarios that I want them to write out how they would address, or I could give them um, case scenarios from behavior detectives and see, have them write out what they would do, right? So you could create written product measures of those if that's what you wanted to do. So anyway, that wraps up our supervision curriculum. I hope you found this helpful. I hope the curriculum helps you to at least, you know, get some ideas as to what you can teach and how you can structure those things. And one of the things that I, I mention in all of the uh, written uh, pieces on the box folder, this is a work in progress. I add new topics. So if you have topic ideas or if you have material you would like to um, share and, and add to this, this could be, you know, a, a growing base of topics that we could all pull from. Um, but as I add new topics, if there's things that I go into in more detail, um, I'll be sure to add them. Uh, follow that box link so that you can see all of the written documentation. And in the comments, if you have questions or feedback um, or suggestions for other topics, future topics, please leave those. And I hope you have enjoyed this. Feel free to share it with others who might benefit. Thank you.